Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends with a pretty big preview video for you today. We got to see all of the cards that are going to be in the Magic the Gathering Unsanctioned box set. A lot of reprints from the older unsets, as well as 16 brand new silver bordered cards. Quickly before we get into it though, just a fast reminder, if you go over to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code, save 10% on orders over $10. They do have Theros Beyond Death singles on the website. Hopefully you can save a little bit of cash if you're looking to pick something up. And whenever you use that promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. But without any further ado, let's get into it. Before we get into the unsanctioned information, though, Wizards of the Coast did drop a little more news today regarding the promo card you see on the screen. It is a promo Crucible of Worlds. It's got brand new art. It's in foil. And you might be asking yourself, how do I get a hold of this? Well, during the World Championship weekend, February 14th through the 16th, WPN stores can schedule a standard viewing party event. If you go to one of those and get to the top 16, this Crucible of Worlds promo card would be yours, which is pretty cool. All right, on to the unsanctioned stuff now. Here is the unsanctioned box set. This is what it will look like in stores. And we have talked about this product in the past, but just to give you a rundown in case you haven't kept up with it, you're going to find five 30 card decks in here. Each are going to feature one of the five colors. And the idea is you play with another person. The two of you will choose two of the decks, shuffle them together and then each of you will have a 60 card deck consisting of two colors. You'll also get two six-sided dice in the box, 10 double-sided tokens, 10 full art basic lands, five regular and five foil are included within the decks. We'll look at those later. There's one reusable box here so you can keep all the cards together, and this will be released on February 29th. Now, they don't give MSRPs anymore, but it appears the pre-order price at most locations has been $49.99 for the product. Let's move on to the tokens. This is what they showed us. These are double-sided, remember. You have Beeble, Giant Teddy Bear, and Acorn Stash. Okay, on to the actual contents of the decks, beginning with the white deck. And here's the way I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you the reprints first. The cards in this section at the beginning of each deck are going to be older versions of the cards. They did not show us the new version coming out. My assumption is they probably won't have new art if they didn't show it to us, because in one case later on, there is a reprint with new art, which I'll point out. So first off, in the white deck, here's the cards from Unglued. Knight of the Hokey Pokey, look at me, I'm the DCI, and Paper Tiger. Unhinged is going to bring us AWOL, MC, Frankie Peanuts, look at me, I'm R&D, and Staying Power. And the Unstable reprints, Adorable Kitten, Go to Jail, Humming, Old Guard, Ordinary Pony, and Sword of Dungeons and Dragons. Here's your first new card now. Flavor Judge, designated as a rare, it's a white and one bird advisor, 2-2. Two, two. Tap, choose target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control. Then ask a person outside the game if the story of what will happen makes sense. If they say no, sacrifice Flavor Judge and counter that spell or ability. And the flavor text here also kind of gives you an idea of what they mean by that. Basically, if you're doing something that just logically doesn't make sense, someone could go ahead and say, that doesn't make any sense. So there you go. Classic unstyle, definitely. Strutting Turkey. This is a host creature bird designated as an uncommon. It's going to cost you a white and three. Two, two. When this creature enters the battlefield, exile target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. If it has augment, combine it with a host you control. Otherwise, put it onto the battlefield. Circadian Night Owl. I like the name here. This is a fun card. Two white and three, four, four. It's a rare legendary creature bird knight. It has Knight Lifelink. Damage dealt by knights you control also cause you to gain that much life. You can pay a white, and this will gain Vigilance until end of turn, but you can only activate this ability if it's between Sunrise to Sunset. Or you can pay a black. This will gain Flying until end of turn, but you can only activate that ability from Sunset to Sunrise. Onto the blue deck. Here's the cards reprinted from Unglued. You get Chicken Owl King, Common Courtesy, and Rock Lobster. You get quite a few from Enhinged, Avatar of Me, Carnivorous Death Parrot, Cheaty Face, Johnny Combo Player, Richard Garfield PhD, Topsy Turvy, and Water Gun Balloon Game. And then from Unstable, you get Magic Word, Merman, Time Out, and Wall of Fortune. On to the new cards, Alexander Clamilton, of course. It's a blue and two legendary creature, Clam Folk Advisor Rebel, designated as a rare 0-4. Whenever you cast a wordy spell, scry two. 
A spell is wordy if it has four or more lines of rules text. Pay a red and one and tap. Choose target creature you don't control. Reveal the top card of your library. Alexander Clamilton gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of lines of rules text of the revealed card. Alexander Clamilton fights that creature. The art is amazing, too, I have to say on this one. B.O.B. Bevy of Beebles. Okay, this is going to cost you two blue and three. Legendary Planeswalker B.O.B. Mythic Rare has a star for loyalty. When this enters the battlefield, create four 1-1 Beeble creature tokens. The number of loyalty counters on this is equal to the number of Beebles you control. Create or sacrifice Beebles whenever Bob gains or loses loyalty. Plus one, up to X target Beebles can't be blocked this turn, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Minus one, draw a card. I think this is pretty fun if you remember Beebles from back in the day. Having a Planeswalker based around Beebles is kind of awesome. Rings a bell. Two blue and two enchantment uncommon. When this enters the battlefield, choose a word with four or more letters. After you say the chosen word for the first time each turn, an opponent may ring or imitate a bell within five seconds. When no opponent does, draw a card. Okay, so kind of the opposite of the idea that some of the cards in Unhinged used to have where they didn't want you to say something, so people would kind of sit there and play in silence. Here you're trying to say the word and sneak it past your opponent, so I like that idea. I think that's better design than the old way. On to black, here's your reprints from Unglued, Inferno Spawn of Evil, Jumbo Imp, Poultry Geist, Jack in the Mox. From Unhinged, they'll be reprinting Booster Tutor, Duh, Enter the Dungeon, and Infernal Spawn of Infernal Spawn of Evil. From Unstable, you get Dirty Rat, Hoisted Hireling, Inhumaniac, Skull Saucer, Snickering Squirrel, and Stinging Scorpion. And here's your first new card in black. A Cornelia Fashionable Filcher. This costs a black and three legendary creature squirrel rare 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast a spell with a squirrel in its art, you get an acorn counter. Whenever a squirrel you control enters the battlefields or dies, you get an acorn counter. Pay a black and two, pay X acorn counters. Target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. Pay green, pay X acorn counters. Target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn. I do like how some of these cards have natural pairings with other colors, so if you want the most out of this card, you want to play Golgari colors. Next, we have an Augment card. It's Bat, and the Augment cost is a black and one. And if you remember from Unstable, what that means is you pay the black and one, reveal this card from your hand, combine it with Target Host. You can only Augment as a sorcery, though. It's going to give something plus one, plus one, creature type Bat. It's designated as an Uncommon and a Black card. It has flying. At the beginning of each end step, if an opponent lost three or more life this turn, comma, so then of course the host would fill in the rest of that sentence. Infernius Spawnington the Third Esquire. Okay, so there you go. The whole family's there. Of course, there has to be another one. Black and ten, creature, demon beast grandchild, but of course, beast and demon are both crossed off and replaced with each other, kind of a callback to the older cards. This is a rare nine nine. Flying, first strike, trample, haste. This spell costs three less to cast for each card you've revealed this turn. When this enters the battlefield, you may say, I'm here. If you do, it deals three damage to target player. Definitely a fun callback for fans of the old unsets. Okay, onto the red deck. Here's the cards from Unglued that you're going to find reprinted. Goblin Tutor, Strategy Schmategy, and Scissors Lizard. From Unhinged, you're going to get Blast from the Past. Goblin SWAT Team, Sixty Beast, yet another Ether Vortex, and Pointy Finger of Doom. And from Unstable, Common Iguana, Goblin Haberdasher, Infinity Elemental, Paniac, Super Duper Death Ray, and Krark's Other Thumb. On to the new cards you'll find here. Abstract Iguana Art. This costs a red and one. It's a 1-1 Uncommon Art Lizard. Whenever you cast a spell, note the first letter of its artist's name. If that letter wasn't already noted, put a plus one plus one counter on this. So this calls back to the artist or the art on the card matters. Boomstacker, interesting dexterity card here. This costs a red and two goblin artificer. It's a rare zero zero. When it enters the battlefield and whenever it attacks, stack two dice on top of it. All dice must be stacked vertically, one on top of the other. This will get plus one plus one for each die in its stack. So initially it will be attacking in as a four four, but there's more. This does have to attack each combat if able. And if the stack falls, you do have to sacrifice it. Stet Draconic Proofreader. This is two red and four legendary creature dragon bureaucrat. It's a rare 4-4 with flying. Whenever this attacks, you may exile a card from your graveyard. When you do, this deals four damage to any target whose name begins with the same letter as the exiled card. So that could include your opponent. You can pay a white, 
delete the first letter of target permanent or player's name until end of turn. So not only can you target the opponent if they have the right letter at the front of their name, but you can also take letters off to try to get to a letter. Yeah, this is definitely an unproduct. Okay, after the green deck, here are some of the unglued reprints. Selvish Impersonators, Free Range Chicken, Growth Spurt, Squirrel Farm, and Bronze Calendar. But there's also one more. Timmy Power Gamer has been reprinted, but this time they did show some new art. So yes, this card is getting new art. You see that on the right side. Here's the reprints from Unhinged, B-I-N-G-O, Old Fogey, and Who, What, When, Where, Why. Unstable brings us Half Squirrel Half, Mother Kangaroo, Slaying Mantis, Wild Crocodile, an entirely normal armchair. Okay, here's the new cards in the green deck. Pippa, Duchess of Dice. Green and two, legendary creature, human noble, rare 2-2. Two, two. Pay a green and two, tap. Roll a six-sided die. It becomes a green die creature token with power and toughness equal to its result. Notice that is not until end of turn, so that die continues to be a creature. Pay a blue and two, tap, re-roll any die. Activate this ability only any time it makes sense. Perfect. So notice with that second ability, sure, you can re-roll the die creature if you want to, but you can re-roll any die. So if you roll for any reason at all, this does give you an opportunity to re-roll, which is pretty cool too. What I like about these cards is they do feel like if you have a commander play group that allows for some silver bordered cards, a lot of these could be fun and actually not feel like overpowered or anything like that. And also for silver bordered cubes, there's some great additions here. This is one of them. I like this one a lot too. Spirit of the Season, it's an uncommon. Two green and one, Tree Folk Spirit 3-3. Three, three. When this enters the battlefield, it gains haste if it's summer. Put a plus one plus one counter on it if it's autumn. You gain five life if it's winter. If it's spring, search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Surgeon Commander, crossing out the general because of course commanders used to be called generals and now it's commander, so there you go. Green and three. This one is a Mythic Rare 3-3 three, three, Legendary Creature Wombat Bat Chameleon. Whenever you augment, enchant, or mutate a creature you control, draw a card, tap, and you can add either white, blue, black, red, or green mana. Okay, so we know what enchant is, we know what augment is, we talked about that earlier, but what is mutate? We don't know yet. Mutate will be coming in a future set, I have no doubt. Maybe a future onset. Maybe in a future standard set, perhaps as soon as Ikoria. I feel like the mutate mechanic might make sense there. And finally, we have Underdome, and there's one copy of this in each of the five decks. So basically, when you play, you're going to have two copies of this in your deck, and it's a land, common. You can tap it for colorless. Now, this next part will help you play some of those off-color abilities that we've seen, or tap, add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to pay silver-bordered costs. Onto the basic lands, and the full art lands have been part of the unsets ever since the beginning. They're a big selling point for people that might not even care about silver-bordered cards at all. And this time around, they are included, but I do have some good news and some bad news. The good news is I think they still look really cool. The border's a callback to the previous unset Full Art Lands, which is kind of cool. I feel aesthetically they did a really good job with these. The bad news is it doesn't sound like you're going to get that many of them in this box. When you look at each of the five decks, it appears that 10 of the basic lands are going to be non-Full Art Lands. So the planes that you see on the right side, 10 of those will be in your white deck. The other two basic lands in your deck will be full art, one in foil, one in non-foil. So basically, in the box, you get a total of 10 full art lands, five foil, five non-foil, one of each, I would assume. That's disappointing to me and to a lot of players, I think. So I'll give you my thoughts on that in a second. Let's go ahead and look at the rest of the lands. Here's islands. Swamps. Mountains. And forests. So ultimately, I just kind of wish there was a way for them to get more of these lands into players' hands, and maybe there will be another avenue. If they don't do something, I do think these are going to be very scarce, maybe become expensive, become very sought after. And the downside to that is you might have a lot of people buying up these products, trying to sit on them or flip them, and then players won't be able to play with them. And that's the whole idea. People should be playing with these cards and having fun with them, not be in a situation where if they want to play with one of these, they have to drive to 10 Walmarts to find one or go to eight game stores because all the game stores are sold out because people are trying to put them on eBay, so on and so forth. Now, putting more lands in here would be nice. I don't know if it would have necessarily solved the problem because these lands look pretty cool, and I do think they're going to be highly sought after. 
It would have been nice if they didn't do the regular lands and you just had full art lands in here, maybe 10 of the regular ones in each deck and two foils. The foils would still feel special, but you'd have enough of the non-foil ones so you could still put them in decks and stuff if you wanted to later. And I feel like that would just be a lot more satisfying for the price. But like I said, I still think you would have issues with inventory and people trying to buy them up and such. So I think ultimately Wizards just needs to find another avenue to get these lands into players' hands. I don't know what that's going to look like. Could you put them in another product? Could it be a drop, like a secret layer where you can buy a bunch of these? I don't know. That might be coming. Who knows? But I do think there needs to be a way to get more of these lands out there. Or casual players are just not going to be able to play with this casual product, which is kind of sad. Okay, that wraps up the unsanctioned previews. Now, other than the whole land thing I just talked about, I do think the product looks like it's a lot of fun. The new silver border cards look cool. I feel like if I could play them in Commander with some play groups, some of them could be a lot of fun there. Great for some cubes if you want to play with some silver bordered cards there. And great selection of reprints too. And I think the price point's fair considering what you're getting. But like I said, I think the lands are going to be kind of a dark cloud hanging over this a little bit. Until next time though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.